Hello and welcome once again to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're making a rocket. We're concentrating on our hard surface modeling skills and this is part two of building a rocket. And in today's episode, we will be making the window and we will be using the shrink wrap modifier. So first of all, let's go to front view. I'll reposition my cursor in the center. So shift S, cursor to world origin. And I'm going to press shift A to add a circle, not the circle in the curves, but the circle in the mesh. And I've got mine set to 32, which is the default, and I would suggest you do the same. First of all, I'm going to go to wireframe mode, so you can see it, there it is, and I'm going to rotate it in the x-axis 90 degrees. And I always think it's a good idea to apply that rotation so that it doesn't mess up later. So control A and apply that rotation. Actually, I'm going to scale it down as well, so I'll probably apply that in a second as well. So I'll scale it down to about there, and I'll move it into position on the z-axis, so G then Z and I think somewhere around there would be great. So if I go to side view now, I'm going to bring it out the front, grab in the Y, and it's gonna be at the front of the rocket. And this is where I want to use my shrink wrap to push it onto this object. I'll just set that scale that I did, control A and apply the scale. And I've just remembered I'm going to rotate it slightly again, so I'll be doing that again in a second. It doesn't matter how many times you set the rotation. So let's zoom in a bit, and I'm just going to get it quite close to my object because it will project to the nearest surface. If I project it like it is at the moment, these might distort slightly depending on which the nearest surface is. So if I rotate it slightly and get it reasonably close, somewhere about there, then it's going to keep its shape. And in fact, I might like to keep that rotation, so this 12 degrees, then when I extrude the shape out, I can extrude it in the local axis. I'll explain more about that later. So first of all, let's add our modifier, the shrink wrap modifier. Nothing happens because I haven't set my target. I press on this little pipette or picker here and I can pick my object, which is named cube 002. Click that and it will immediately shrink wrap, which is great. And you can see it follows the contours of my shape. The shrink wrap modifier is a commonly used one for hard surface modeling as it enables you to reshape your objects and conform them to other objects. Now remember this is a modifier, so the shape, if I go to edit mode, is still out here. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm quite happy with this, so I'm just going to apply it. So it's set, and now I go to edit mode, it's set in that position. What I want to do is extrude these vertices, so I've got another shape in here, and then pull them out to get the frame of my window. So to help me and guide me, I'm going to actually add another shrink wrap modifier. Now it seems strange, why did I just apply the first one? Well that was to make sure that my vertices were actually on the object and not out here. And now I've added another one. So when I extrude these in, let's go to front view and press E to extrude and scale them in. That will be conforming to the shrink wrap modifier when I go back into object mode. It's not at the moment though, I'm thinking what's going on. That's because I haven't set my target. So I get my little pipette or picker and click on the target and now you can see it conforming to the shape. But remember in edit mode, they're still inside here because that's not seeing my modifier. And when I go to object mode, it will see my modifier and see my shape. Now, again, I want to apply this because I won't be able to extrude these shapes out with it applied because they'll be shrink wrapping to my object. There is a way around that, you can keep the modifier, but it's a little bit complicated and there's no point in going into that complication for this sort of object. But if you want to know how, it's to do with vertex groups. So it's a good idea to save your work and then apply that shrink wrap modifier. You can even duplicate this object and hide it if you want to go back to this sort of setting. I'm just going to apply mine and there it is. Let's go to solid mode and we can just about see it on the surface because it's in exactly the same place. So let's go to edit mode and into face mode and I'm going to select all, so all the faces, into side view and press E to extrude and notice it's keeping the local coordinates. That's why I didn't set that last rotation that I did. I was thinking about it, but I didn't in the end. So to get the right thickness, perhaps around there, let's just quickly look at our object and see if we're happy. I think that looks okay. And now we can add our subdivision surface modifier to sort of smooth it out. Put this up slightly. And at the moment it looks like a donut. So we need to bevel our edges. So go to edge mode with two, left click and control B about there. See what that looks like. Looks pretty good. And we'll do the same with the other side here. Control B to about there. I could have done them at the same time and then they'd be exactly the same. That would have been a better solution. And I'll need to do the same on these inside edges here. So Control B and this last one here, Control B. And remember you can hold down Shift 
if you want to move it only very slightly. So there we go, there's our window frame. So there's our window frame done, we just need to add the window in there now. So if we make sure our window frame is selected, and then press Shift S and cursor to selected, that means the 3D cursor will be right in the center. Now I found the best way to do this is to press Shift A and add a UV sphere. The slight problem with UV spheres is that they do have triangles at the very top, but that shouldn't affect us too much in this case. So first of all, I'm going to rotate by the x-axis 90 degrees so that it's facing this way. I'm also going to set that rotation, so Control A and Rotation, just so I don't get any problems later on, and go to Side View with 3 on my numpad. I'm going to scale it down so it meets my window frame. And it's interesting, you can see the skewing that the shrink wrap modifier has done slightly here. So I need to just move this into position. So I'm going to grab and just move it into position. And I could rotate it exactly the same as I rotated this one, but I'm just going to do it by eye at the moment because I'm sure that'd be fine in this situation. So it's about 13.3 degrees. Let's see what this one was, 12, minus 12. So I could make it exactly the same, minus 12. There we go, it should be the same. Although it is actually slightly different. And again, that's to do with our shrink wrap and how that distorted the object slightly. So it's probably best to do this by eye, like so. Let's go to front view and make sure that lines up. And again, you can see some of the minor distortion that's happened. Back to side view and I'm going to scale it in the Y axis. Press Y twice and it will be the local coordinates, so the coordinates to this spherical object because I rotated it really slightly. And then let's move it into position again. So I think somewhere around here and let's scale it up just a touch and maybe scale it in the Z axis, but the local Z axis, so two Zs. So that will be going, so scale ZZ and it'll be going that way. But I'm gonna do it from this angle here so I can see. And that's looking pretty close. Now I can add a subdivision surface modifier to that. Probably only need one subdivision and shade smooth. I could also delete half of the object. I'm gonna leave you to do that. It's not going to make much difference to me in this case, but if you want to make a nice clean object, then please do that. So my last thing to do is to do a sort of loop and add a bit of detail around the middle of my rocket. I can do a similar scenario, so I'll do this one slightly quicker. So Shift A and add a circle. I'll go to top view and I'll make sure that circle's in the center. So Alt G to get rid of any transforms. I'll scale it up so it's close to my rocket shape, the body. Go to front view and move this into position. So grab in the Z axis, I want to loop around here. I'm going to scale it in and make it really close, but it mustn't intersect my main body. Otherwise the shrink wrap won't work. Go to my modifier, add the shrink wrap, select my target, which is cube 002, and it's shrink wrap to that target. I'm just gonna offset it really slightly so we can see it. There we go, no problems. I can then apply that shrink wrap modifier, which is great, and I actually want to add a new one so that when I extrude this out, it will still stay shrink wrapped. Into edit mode, I'm going to go to front view, extrude in the Z axis and pull this down. Somewhere around there, and you can see a very slight distortion in my shape pushing up here. And that's the shrink wrap modifier being very tiny bit glitchy. It could be an issue with my original shape. So it's not necessarily the shrink wrap modifier being glitchy, it's my modeling. So back into edit mode, and I can scale this in the Z zero, just to line it up. The same with this one. So Alt, left click, scale, Z zero to line them all up. And to help it out, I'm going to scale this one in slightly so it's close to my rocket. You don't necessarily have to do a shrink wrap modifier. You can do it by eye in this case, but I'm just going through the process once again. So into object mode, and I haven't actually selected my target, so let's select the target and it will shrink wrap perfectly to that. This time it looks like it's in line as well. So lastly, I can apply that. I don't have to apply it, I could do a vertex group but in this case, I'm just going to apply. It's a good idea to save your work at this point. Apply, and then into object mode, press three to select all the faces, E to extrude, and scale, but not in the Z axis, so Shift Z. And then we can bring out our detail. There it is, he's looking fantastic. I actually feel it needs to be a bit thicker, so I'm just gonna thicken it up, but you don't really have to watch that, I'll just time-lapse it. That's great, about there. I'll add my subdivision surface modifier and I'll bevel the corners. This time I'll do them all together. 
control B, and there we go. All that's left now is for me to texture my all that's left now is for me to texture my object. So we can go to the shading tab. I'm in look dev mode at the moment. So that sort of has fake world lighting. And I can go in and change my materials. So maybe a nice red rocket that's really shiny. And a black window. And then different colored rims and frames. If you select a few objects and then the last one you select, press Control L and materials, you can link up the materials. And lastly, I think it needs a floor. So Shift A, Mesh Plane, and let's scale that up. Go to Side View and just pull that down so it's standing on the floor. And the very last thing, we can set up a bit of lighting. So I'll change the rendered mode and I'm going to go to the world and add an HDRI. Remember this is an environment texture, not a normal texture. And I quite like the way that's looking. Okay, so that wraps that up. Hopefully that's given you more insight into hard surface modeling and I'll produce more episodes in the near future. Thanks for watching.